Stace, what do you make of all this? Oh, my goodness, Dan. It's kind of like the old soap opera as the bulls turn. Oh, I'm sitting there watching with my grandma. Woo. What's the reaction locally here? Uh, I think it's. I think the city is, is really frustrated with the way the team has played. It's been up and down, you know, all season long. It's been very inconsistent. Um, I think they're frustrated with Fred Hoiberg. Um, you know, it, it's just overall frustration with the whole, the whole situation down here. And I think it just kind of, kind of blew up, you know, after this last game in Atlanta, you're up 10 points with, you know, probably under two minutes to go and they find a way to lose. And I think that, you know, frustrations blew over in the locker room and, and guys, you know, spoke their mind. I'm not a big fan of that. I'm not a big fan going to the media and calling teammates out. You know, a guy like Dwayne Wade, who's won three championships, has a little bit more weight than, you know, most guys to do that. He's a future Hall of Famer. Uh, but I, I think those things are, are left better, you know, said in the locker room to guys' face. If you want to motivate somebody, I don't think you do it that way. How's this play out, Stacy? Because – you, something has to give here. Hoiberg, it feels like, is on thin ice. Rondo feels like one foot out the door. And Dwayne Wade and Jimmy Butler, it's not working. And are you going to you know, get into a rebuilding mode here in Chicago really soon? Well, I, I, think, that, I think they're thinking about that now. Uh, this, is, this has been the second year in a row. You know, I like Fred Hoiberg. I think he's a, a very good young coach. He came to a team where guys are, you know, they're setting their ways. You know, he didn't come to a young team like a Minnesota, you know, or the Los Angeles Lakers where he could put his stamp on a team. Um, he came to a team that, you know, had won 50 games, who played for, you know, one of the top coaches in the league at the time and Tom Thibodeau. But these guys were used to a rigid style of coaching, a coaching, you know, where, you know, kind of like I'm getting in your face, I'm yelling at you, I'm screaming at you. Uh, and, and you look at Fred, he's not like that. He doesn't have that type of personality. Me personally, I'd love to play for a guy like Fred because he lets you play his game, play your game. But these guys have not bought into what he's doing as a coach, and I don't think it's fair to him. I don't think he's had a fair sh- chance, and I think it's been some stubbornness on certain players to, to buy into what he's trying to do. And as long as that's going to happen, you're going to have to make changes. You're either going to have to you know, make the change as a coach or you're going to have to blow up the team and say, hey, you know what, let's give this guy – a young team, let's start from scratch and let's rebuild and, and start our movement like Philadelphia and, and some of these other Los Angeles Lakers and go younger. But you were there with Phil Jackson and Michael Jordan, and I know we didn't have social media, but how were things discussed, settled in the locker room when there were disputes? Well, players handled their business themselves. I mean, we trust me, we had fist fights, you know, behind the scenes no one knew about. I mean, guys got after each other, but you know what? We were we were a solid group. That's the only way you can win championships if you you, know, you got to have everybody on the same page. And, you know, players never called out players in the media. It, it, if anybody was going to call out anybody, it'd be Phil. Phil would always get you those little sneak disses in the, in the press, and you'd be like, wow, come on, Phil. You could have told me that, you know, because, I mean, you see now with Phil and Carmelo. I mean, so when you see what's going on now in New York with, with the, the things that are being leaked out and, and Phil would have ways to, to get your attention, you know. And so if anybody was going to do that, uh, it would be Phil in, in a professional way, not in a way to demean anybody or to, you know, make a, make a player feel like he's, you know, he's worthless. But, you know, this situation now with social media and the way things are in this generation, and these kids that are playing in this league now, um, they feel like they got to tell everybody what's going on. I mean, you look at the situation in Cleveland with LeBron. I mean, LeBron has the right to say whatever he wants to because he's the best player in the league right now. But when you won a championship last year and your GM was the, the greatest GM, and then this year you're not winning, now he's not a good GM. So you got to handle those things in house. And, and, you know, you, you just, uh, these kids nowadays, Dan, and you know, I mean, they, they feel like they got to go on Snapchat, they got to go on, you know, Instagram, they got to tell everything that's going on. And it's, it's really sad. But these are veterans who are involved in this. You know, Jimmy Butler, Dwayne Wade, and Rajon Rondo, they've been around the block or two. They're the ones that are showing these younger kids how not to do it. That's what I find embarrassing about all yeah. of this. Yeah, I, I'm, that's what I'm a little bit disappointed in because, you know, regardless of what people think about Rondo, Rondo has been a great, great teammate this year. You know, I've heard all the stories about him, you know, on these other teams, and I was a little skeptical when we picked him up, but – you know, I'm around him every day. I mean, he works with the young players. He's been a great mentor, uh, and people have been waiting for him to explode. You know, he got benched, you know, a couple of weeks ago, set out five games. Um, he didn't He didn't blow up on the sideline. He didn't stop coming to games. I mean, this is a guy 
who comes to the events even when he's not scheduled to be there. If they give the guys a night off, he comes to the practices with the young players. He even goes to D-League games to watch some of the some of the kids that may not be playing a lot for the Bulls that go down and play for the Windy City Bulls. Hmm. This is a guy that goes and watches these kids play, you know, at the Windy City Bulls game, giving him some support. So I can see where he's coming from, and I can see Dwayne Wade's frustration. But at the end of the day, you know, you've got to be held accountable. You know, this this thing cannot happen. If you're Fred Hoiberg right now, I, I don't know if it's too late, but you you got to put your foot down and you got to lay the law down. And this can't be happening. You can't be airing your dirty laundry out like, you know, a bunch of schoolgirls and going to social media talking about each other because it just doesn't look right. This is professional sports. It's not high school. Stacy, good to talk to you as always. And, uh, you know, maybe one day we'll have you on and we're talking about fun things, nice things, good things. <laughs> I, you know, and I always feel like this is like a uh, moody Monday when I talk to you. Y'all got me on, y'all just got me on the negative. I know. I know. On, DP, I, know. I, I say to Fritzy, uh, negative stuff on the Bulls. Call Stacy King. So, uh, <laughs> so, sorry. It seems like that, but I always enjoy coming on, man. You got a great show, bud. Thank you, Stace. Take it easy. Uh, Stacy King, the uh, Comcast Sportsnet Bulls analyst there. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.